This is part D, question number three. It says, Grange Home College is based on a large campus with access to a local area network in all areas. There are several dedicated computer rooms equipped with personal computers that have a wide connection to the network server. Remote access to the network is provided via a VPN. The network server is located in a dedicated server room with secure access. The network is used by IT technicians, administrative tasks, uh, staff, sorry, teaching staff and students. All users of the network are given user accounts. User accounts were set up by the IT technicians. Discuss how user accounts impact on different user groups of the system. User groups created students, teaching staff, administrative staff, IT technicians, all members of groups automatically get the same access rights. All users have a profile that allow that, sorry, that shows which access rights the user has on the system i.e. what they can and cannot access on the network. Access rights include access to and limitations on what can be done in the following areas. Files, folders, application software, hardware access, network administration. All users will be able to log into a workstation PC and perform general user tasks. So here we have file access rights. All users will have access to, access to own files and delete them. Ac uh, access specified in a shared area, copy to own user area. Students will not be able to access any other user files, so you cannot access your friend's files, delete them. Teachers will be able to add files to the shared area, delete and edit files in the shared area, access edit, create, um, create administrative files relating to students' progress, but they can't access student files directly or other teachers' files. Admin staff will be able to access edit files relating to, the, to their particular role, example, pupil, admin, finance, and HR but will not be able to access admin files outside of their remit. IT technicians will be able to access files required for network administration, but are unlikely to be able to access admin files, example, pupil admin, finance, and HR. Application software access rights. Um, access to applications and software will be limited to what is deemed necessary to carry out their roles, so sorry, the user's roles. Um, hardware access to certain printers, scanners, uh, et cetera, may be restricted for all users, often depending um, depending geographical location, but maybe to do with types, example, color printers, laser printers, inject. Uh, logging onto a PC may be limited for students, example, may not be able to log on to a teacher PC. So if your teacher PC is at the teacher workstation, it might not be able to sign into that. I'm going to try and explain this in a bit simpler way when I finish reading it. Network administration, generally restricted to IT technicians, although some teachers may be able to carry simple tasks such as changing passwords. IT te technicians do most administration tasks on the system. Install new software, change system settings, add or delete users, settle quotas, example, printing user space, um, access everyone's files and folders, restricting access and restricting particular websites. So let me go back to the question. Question number three, I believe. Question number three. Let's go back to it. And it wants us to discuss how user accounts impact on different user groups of the system. So what I would do first in this situation is list the user groups. All right. So the user groups that they gave us were... Where are they? Where are they? Uh, one second, if I can find... Okay, here we go. These are the user groups. So discuss how user accounts impact on different user groups of the system. So first and foremost, list the user groups on the system. Um, so these are the ones that we have. Let me just get rid of these things here. Teaching, staff, and students. Now, I'm doing this in a bit of a roundabout way, but then what I would do next, since I've listed all my four groups, I would first go ahead and say, what are user groups, or sorry, what are user accounts? Um, first and foremost, a user account is simply the virtual area which a person is able to log into to be able to access their files and the folders that they've been given, files, uh, files programs and folders that they've been given permission to access, okay? That's how I would define user accounts. Now, how would each person discuss how user accounts impact on different user groups? So how would the IT's user group impact on other user groups? So IT technicians, they can uh, do almost anything. So these are the guys that, oh my, spelling, geez. These are the guys that can almost, the guys and ladies that can almost do anything. They, as it said in the thing, they create user accounts, they delete them, they add printers, they remove printers, they do system updates, they do all of these things. So simply think about what do you think this person needs to do 
for their system, so within their group and for other groups. They're the ones that actually create the other groups and manage the other groups. And what does managing the other group entail? Adding users, removing users, making sure users have the right permissions, making sure they have access to printers, making sure that they have enough printing credit on their account, making sure that they can change certain settings. So let's say um, I actually teach at a school I attended, so maybe my user account might need to be upgraded to a teacher account. It's a bit of a weird one, but that's just how it works generally, right? Um, now, now we go to administrative staff. What do they need to do? So simply think about how the administrative staff need to operate in order to help the rest of the people. So administrative tasks, they normally are linked to teachers and students. They might set certain permissions or do certain admin tasks, emailing teachers, emailing students, contacting home, um, creating timetables, logging in and um, editing files for the administrative section only. IT technicians, going back to that one quickly, they might be able to temporarily log into students' accounts and move files around and check for backups and stuff like that because if a student can't uh, log into their account, the IT technician might be able to reset it or temporarily log in to copy files over. Let's jump down to teaching staff now. Teaching staff and students have almost the same permissions. They, we as teachers, we don't get much more permissions than you do. So you might think a teacher might be able to install stuff. No, that's never, ever, ever the case. You always have to go to the IT technician for them to be able to do that stuff for you. So teaching staff, they can create lessons, they can create files, again, within the shared area only. Administrative staff can also do that in a shared area. IT staff can do that. Uh, the IT technicians can do that in a shared area. And in some cases, students might only be able to view stuff from the shared area and copy it into their area, but they cannot create stuff in the shared area. Um, they can do timetables for students. They can do lessons. They can do marking coursework. Just think about all the stuff that the teacher is able to do in your school, in your college, on your network, to your files. They will not be able to log into your user account and edit your files. But what they can do is create files and put them on a shared area where you can then go and access them. Students have very, very limited access, just like teachers, as I've said. They can log into their user account. They will not be able to see files from other users' accounts, just like teachers would, just like the admin staff would. Some IT technicians, like the person at the very, 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 very top, might be able to log into any account and see what's going on for security reasons or for backup and recovery reasons, for data recovery reasons, for any one of those reasons, right? Students have very limited access. When they log in, they can maybe create a file in their own user area. They can edit a file in their own user area. They can delete a file in their own user area. They cannot see any other user areas. And if they have access to a shared area, students are typically not allowed to copy anything into that area. But what they can do in most cases is copy stuff out. So they can copy something from a shared area to their local area.